compression test job requires not a lot of tools, but obviously you're going to need a compression tester. This one has a peak hold and a relief. The appropriate fitting that plugs into the compression tester and then screws into the corresponding cylinder. I have a couple specialty tools, which are the hook tool and the angle tool. This makes getting the coil packs out from the wiring harness really easy. Obviously then you're going to need your extension, wrench, standard flathead and, and Phillips screwdriver. I use a screwdriver that I bent a little bit to help pry up the coil packs. So the B6S4 is a great car, but one of the things you really want to do when you get one of these is do a compression test. A lot of these motors being aluminum can end up running into serious compression issues, bent valves if the chains have failed or had an intermittent timing chain guide crack or, or adjuster failure. So what we're going to do here is briefly walk through doing a compression test and, and what all it entails so you can see if this is something you can do at home. On a 2005, this is what you're going to see. Pretty easy to strip the car down. We kind of have some stuff set up here. This over here gets removed. I left, obviously, the tray open so you can see the battery. We pull this out of the way. Now, you don't need to move the plates, but I do. You can see there's where the two grommets are on that have to pull the cover off. The coolant container is going to need to get moved out of the way for when you pull the spark plugs out. I already pulled one of the ducts for the ram air. This needs to get removed. The cover plate. Your air box and mass air meter come out together. Then when you get down to this point, you have to take the you get a better angle. You have to get the elbow going from the throttle body to the air box. One thing I wanted to expose was this piece right here. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult for people to get out. And that's where it is. It's just a reverse barb fitting. This gets removed. So now we take it down to this point. The next things that need to get removed are all the coil packs and the spark plugs. So the specialty tools are to help get the coil packs unplugged from the wiring harness. Now if you look at a lot of the B6S4 wiring harnesses, a lot of the easy relief clips on the back are broken. That's why I have a hook tool. Generally what I do is you want to get in there with the hook tool and just get above this little lip, barely, and pry this tab up. This tab right here is what's holding the coil pack into the wiring harness. Once you go and you relieve this tab, then the coil pack will slide out. Generally how you'll see it, but you'll notice a lot of these relief parts are broken. Generally what you would do is you'd get in here and you'd pry back and this is supposed to go and lift the tab up. but. A lot of times that's not really practical and it doesn't work that way. So the specialty tool works to where you can easily get it in and then turn the hook tool. So now that we have it here, there's the last two things to do before we finalize the rest and start doing the compression test. One of the issues is the fuel line. A lot of people will go and maybe pull the fuse, you have that option, potentially disconnect the ECU so it doesn't deliver fuel. What I like to do is take the fuel line and put it into an oversized clear water bottle. Something of this size is generally enough for each bank and it lets you take a look at the fuel coming from the fuel filter to see if there's maybe another problem back there. To take the compression tool, it's really pretty simple. Thread in this to the spark plug hole, 
which goes in. You don't have to go crazy tight, obviously, to the point where you realize that it's it's seated in there and you'll it firms up. You don't need to keep going, doesn't need to be crazy. Then you simply click in the compression side of the tool and you're ready to go to the next step. So now we have our car prepped for our compression test. And as you can see, we have bank one, all the coil packs are out. Same over here on bank two. We have a battery charger on there to keep the battery uh, with plenty of juice for starting. You don't want to lose amperage while you're doing this. The other thing you want to make sure you do is it doesn't do any good if you're trying to go and do a compression test your motor can't get any air so we put a box wrench in there with the screwdriver through it so it doesn't get sucked up into the motor. So from there what we've done is we've put our compression tester, we're just going to do this on bank one, cylinder number two, because it makes it a little bit easier. The motor's cold, and this is a dry test. You can see our last cylinder we tested was just, just about 140. Reset that back to zero. And you'll see that when you crank it, you only want to crank the, the motor for about four revolutions. You'll see the needle jump about four times. All right, go ahead. So this cylinder is really strong. See how that came up and stuck there and hold, and that's what's in that cylinder. Reset it and go and do the corresponding cylinders. <laughs> 